Hello, Calculus Kids. This is Mr. Bean. Today's lesson, we're going to talk about optimization. We're going to get into the very beginnings of what this is, how it works. I'm really excited because this is a hard lesson. <laughs> okay, I know that sounds awful, but the reason I like it is because it is a little bit challenging. It, it helps our minds expand a bit, and it has some real-world applications. A lot of times, we'll talk about things in mathematics. We're like, where the heck would we use this? This optimization stuff is used all over the place. In fact, it was funny because I was a business major for a while in college, and I had to take a calculus class, which I aced, by the way. I was really excited about that. And I couldn't believe how cool it was because there were so many things that were going on with this optimization for businesses. Uh, first, let's make sure we understand the word optimize. Optimize, thanks to Google, thank you, Google, to make the best or most effective use of a situation or resource. In the context that we're going to be using it, we're going to try to optimize something to make, for instance, the most amount of money or the least amount of material, something that has a maximum or a minimum. If we see that in a word problem where we're trying to find the most or the least, that is an optimization problem. That's what we're actually doing. In fact, when I started teaching Algebra 2, I had such a hard time my first few years teaching Algebra 2 because I immediately thought calculus because it was just so much easier to find a maximum or minimum value using calculus strategies. Today's lesson, we are going to focus in on these first three strategies. That's going to be our lesson for five point, what are we doing right now? Five ten, And then when we get to unit next two steps, that will be covered in our next lesson, 511. Focusing on drawing a picture if we need it, write an equation uh, that's going to be optimized, and making sure that equation is in one variable. Okay, these, these steps might, might have no idea what in the world I'm talking about yet, so I'll just show you as we work through it. So this first one, find two numbers whose sum is 30 and whose product is as large as possible. That represents the maximum that we're trying to find when we say as large as possible. So what are we trying to optimize? Product is what we're optimizing. We're trying to find the maximum. So what I'll do over here is I'm gonna write P equals, write a little bit small. I'm gonna have about two or probably three lines that we're gonna write right here. So the product of two numbers that I don't know what the two numbers are. So let's just give them two variables and any variables you want. I'll just use X and Y. This is the equation I'm trying to optimize. The problem is, let's go back here and look. Okay, draw a picture is not applicable for this one. We are writing an equation that will be optimized. We just did that. Okay, check, check. But now we need one single variable. This has two variables, x and y, in terms of one variable, I should say. So I want to say that p equals something else that doesn't have a y in it, or doesn't have an x, either one. So what we do is we use the other equation. Find two numbers whose sum is 30. If I have the sum of 30, that just means that the two numbers added up are 30. Now I could take this, solve for y, y would equal 30 minus x, and now I can substitute that in over here. y is equal to 30 minus x. Now I could uh, distribute the x, clean this up just a little bit, and the product is going to equal 30x minus x squared. Now this is my answer. It's not the answer to the question up here. Find the two, find two numbers. I didn't actually find the two numbers yet, right? But that's because in this lesson, we're not gonna answer the question. We are just going to focus in on setting up, getting to the step three, writing the equation in terms of a single variable. That's all I want you to practice for today. So we've got it right there. If we took the, its derivative and set it equal to zero, we could find a maximum point. Derivative, set it equal to zero, solve, boom, we'd have it. And that X value would be the answer. We could then plug this in here and find what the Y is. But again, that's for our next lesson. Okay, so this was the equation we're trying to optimize. Now let's go to the next one. What point on the graph Y equals the square root of X is closest to five zero? So where on this function, square root of X graph, do we have a point that's really close to five? Obviously this is far away. It's getting closer, it's getting closer, it's getting closer. It's somewhere in here. So I'm just gonna guess and put a point right here just for the visual, just so we can see it. I'm trying to figure out the closest point. Well, that means distance, the distance between these two points. I want it to be small, okay? Closest is basically saying I want the least distance. That's what that means. So let's come up with an equation for distance. So if you think back to our days in geometry, we could do the distance formula, which is we take the two X values uh, and subtract them. We take the difference and then square it, and then add the difference of the two y values. This is actually just a play on the Pythagorean theorem. Because this, if you look at this distance, that's actually the hypotenuse of 
an imaginary triangle we have here, a right triangle that has the difference of the x's, the difference of the y's, and there the d here, the distance, would be the hypotenuse. So this is a play on the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so now we just have to plug in what are the points. One of the points is 5, 0, so we know that. What about this other point? What's the point right here? It is x comma y, but instead of a y, put what y equals. y equals the square root of x. Okay, so it's x comma square root of x. That's this other point. So now let's plug it in. Distance equals, okay, I'll put the square root over here when I'm done. Let's, I'll, I'll get, come back to that. Uh, let's do an x value. So this x value minus the coordinate points x value of 5 quantity squared plus, now if I started with this x, I have to start with this y on the next one. So it's the square root of x, that's my y value, minus, and then this y value is a 0, so there's my two points, quantity squared, and then again, it's the square root of all that. Wah! I'm making a mess. So it's the square root of that whole thing. And now from here, I could clean this up a little bit more uh, and just write d equals, I could multiply out x minus 5 squared, um, that's one option. Uh, I'm not going to on this, just let's make this a little bit easier. x minus 5 quantity squared, but then plus the square root of x squared. So that's just plus x. So yes, it probably could clean up a little bit more, but this isn't too bad right there. And then if we were, that's our, our answer because that's the equation we would optimize. We've got it in terms of one variable and the distance is what we want to make the smallest. So if we took its derivative, set it equal to zero and solve, that would help us get the closest, or in other words, the shortest distance between these two points. All right, Mr. Kelly, let's make a box. He's got a box a, that we're gonna work with some cardboard. Uh, and I can't even remember. I don't think I gave you this much room. Sorry, you might have to draw that a little bit smaller. So we have a cardboard piece of paper that we're cutting out squares in the corners here. So let's cut out a square there and here. So just do that in all four corners. And how big are these? We don't know. So we're gonna call it x by x. So all of these will be an x by x. Now, if we cut those out, you could then bend this up. You'd have to visualize this if you got the spatial understanding of what's going on here, a piece of paper, cut out the corners. Now you could fold this and bend it up and you'd have a three-dimensional box that is open on top, okay? So what we're doing now is, what else do we know about this? Oh, this whole thing here is 14 all the way across. And this whole thing here is 30 all the way up and down uh, uh, for the cardboard. And what size should the squares be? So what, how big should X be in order to create a box with the largest possible volume? So there's, we go largest. When something's large, we're trying to optimize it, the largest. So what is volume equal? Volume equals length times width times height. And this is what we want to optimize, but we can only have one variable here. We have three variables in terms of three variables, so let's change it. What is the length of this box? The length of the box goes from here to here. Well, if the whole distance is 30, we're going to take 30 and subtract what we cut out. We cut out an x here and we cut out an x here, so we're cutting out two x's. And then the width all the way across, it's going to be very similar. It's 14 minus the two x's that we cut out. So 2x, and then times it by the height. This is a little tricky. Some of you might not see it. What's the height of this box? Can you visualize, fold this thing up? How high off the screen would this be coming towards you? It would be a distance of x, however high this is. So that is how, if you fold it up, that's the height of that side right there. All right, now let's clean this up just a little bit. Uh, if I foil this all out, multiply it, distribute, 30 times 14 is 420, and I know that because I have a calculator next to me and I already did it. Minus 60x minus 28x plus 4x squared, and then times the x, and then one more step, we can go ahead and combine like terms and distribute the x all at the same time, and that'll give us our answer of this thing here that's a cubic function. This is what we're trying to optimize. We're trying to optimize the volume. And so we would, again, next lesson, we'll figure out how to do that, but it's just literally taking the derivative, setting it equal to zero, solving from there. And then we would talk about how many answers we'd have. Don't stress about that yet. We'll do that in the next lesson. This is actually the hard part, setting up these equations.
Okay, this last problem is just to help us set up one more type of problem. This doesn't cover everything that we're gonna do in this packet, but it gives you a little bit of idea of how to set these types of weird problems up. So we got two towers. This high tower, it says, is 28 feet, and the other one's only 12. So 28 and 12. And I know that the distance between them is going to be 30. I'm not gonna label that quite yet. I'll show you why in a second. Let's put a dot on the ground and put a wire to the top of that tower and a wire to the top of that tower. Okay, so I'll call this first wire, wire number one, little sub one, and I'll call this one wire sub two. And that just tells me that they're two different wires, have two different lengths. And the towers are 30 feet apart. So if they're 30 feet apart, let's call this distance an X, and I'll call this distance, this would have to be 30 minus the X. Okay, now I've got something I can work with. So, the top of each tower, blah, blah, blah. What sh where should the stake be placed to use the least amount of wire? I want this to be the least, meaning I want to minimize it, or that is a way of saying optimize. I'm trying to make this the most effective way. So the total amount of wire is going to be my little, my W1 plus my W2. That's my total amount of wire. So I need to have this in terms of one variable, which could be X. So W is going to equal, hopefully some of you are already seeing this. These are right triangles right here. So you could use Pythagorean theorem. So W1 is going to equal the square root of this squared plus this squared. So we can just do that right now. Square root of, let's say 28 squared plus, and then I get 30 minus X quantity squared. Plus, and then my second wire, you do the same type of thing. The second wire is these two sides squared. So let's just do the 12 squared plus the X squared. And there it is. This is what I'm trying to optimize. I'm trying to find the least amount of wire. Uh, and yes, I could simplify this out a bit, but this has got some big numbers in there. But the, this was the hard part, setting it up. Now we could use calculus techniques in order to take the derivative, set it equal to zero and solve, which would be a heck of a mess of a problem. But this is the whole idea, the hard part, setting this whole thing up. Okay, I've covered the basic idea. And again, let's go back to the strategies that we're gonna use. Draw a picture when it's needed. Helps you identify the known and unknown quantities. Write an equation that you're gonna optimize and then just make sure the equation you've, opt you've written is in terms of a single variable. You want only one variable before you would take the derivative. Okay, that's everything, so rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back in the next lesson where we will solve these problems.